Um, thank you, Vinay. Hello. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. I'm Alex Yu, and um, in this session, uh, we'll go over a, a high-level view of what MySQL cluster is with the MDB storage engine, and also talk about Galera cluster for MySQL, um, <clears throat> which is starting to become uh, a, the uh, de facto clustering choice for a lot of our user base, uh, especially when we need uh, high availability for, for the applications running on the DB storage engine. And hopefully after um, this time, uh, you will have a better understanding of uh, some of the differences uh, between these two cluster options and, uh, and when to use uh, one over the other, uh, depending on your requirements. But before continuing, I think we now will have uh, a poll ready. Uh, yes, thanks, Alex. So we'll basically run a quick poll just to understand uh, what, uh, what people are running today. So what clustering solution are you using today? Uh, uh, five options, Galera cluster, MySQL cluster, MySQL replication, uh, no clustering or high availability, you're running on single instance, or any other HA cluster solution. And obviously there's, there's many, many out there. Uh, so uh, thank you for participating. Uh, and we'll be we'll be sharing the results uh, right after everybody has voted. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for voting. So we'll be closing we'll be closing the poll in just a couple of seconds. Okay. So, um, so these are the results uh, of these of, of basically today's audience. Um, uh, just about half, actually, exactly half of the audience is using MySQL replication. About a third is running Galera cluster, um, and um, and on third position you have other HA slash cluster solution. And, and again, being in the MySQL community, you, you probably have heard of quite a lot of them. There's MMM, MHA, uh, there's Tungsten, there's uh, you know there's quite a few out there. And then uh, and then there's there's about 10% running on NDB as well as 10% running on single instance. Okay, Alex, back to you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so MySQL cluster. Uh, or rather the MDB storage engine um, was originally developed at Ericsson, uh, the telecom company, and it was primarily targeted to be used um, you know, as an in-memory carry-grade database for uh, network services like subscriber databases. And this technology and the team was acquired uh, by MySQL uh, around 2003. So this is a very uh, battle-tested uh, uh, technology, and the custom solution has been proven to work really, really well. Now, MySQL cluster is a um, distributed uh, multipaster shared Dothan architecture, <clears throat> which means that there's no single point of failure. Um, you don't rely on, on an expensive shared storage solution, and uh, there's no need for external clusterware software either. So failover, network split arbitration, and, and things like that is built in, in the NDB storage engine. So since um, all data nodes are, are masters, you can um, you know, read and write to any of those nodes at any time. And in MySQL cluster, the data is automatically partitioned across um, the data nodes that you have. And this happens automatically and transparently from, from the application point of view. And you can access this information or this data either through um, uh, SQL, uh, using uh, the MySQL server as a SQL proxy basically, or using no SQL interfaces like Cisco Plus or ClusterJ for Java-based applications. Um, with the latest release, you, were, you are now also able to use um, JavaScript uh, with Node.js. Uh, so the different ways to access this information, and depending on which you know, interface that you use, you will get different types of performance out of it. And uh, the data is being synchronously replicated between the data nodes, and then if you uh, want to replicate uh, across clusters, then you use MySQL as asynchronous replication. So MySQL cluster has a great you know, uh, telecom carry grade legacy, and um, you know, it provides finance availability, which is very important for a lot of 
uh, mission critical applications. So some of the typical uh, applications using MySQL cluster is, of course, you know, um, in the telecoms world. Uh, for example, in service delivery platforms, um, payment gateways, and of course, um, Scraper database databases, typically um, HLR, HDS systems. And this is where you have often you know, a massive amount of, of write traffic. And, uh, and, and, and in HLR and HDS cases, um, you know, um, it's been used to track uh, mobile cell phones, which updates its position and, and status so that you can write tra route traffic to the, to the mobile phones. So you need very predictable performance and response times. And uh, for those type of services, um, the application usually use uh, the, the C++ uh, interface, which is the native so-called interface that MySQL provides uh, as default. But uh, uh, recently, also, MySQL has done a lot to improve, um, you know, the workload and the performance for uh, web-based uh, uh, applications. So you can see MySQL has also been used in um, applications like session stores, um, user profit management, um, and online gaming. So, though, so the, the the use case for for MySQL cluster has uh, has expanded quite a lot uh, from the beginning uh, when it started out as a telecom uh, database. Um, so MySQL cluster, if you look at some of the components that comp comprises the cluster, um, at the bottom here you have um, uh, the so-called data nodes, and that's where you actually uh, store the data. The data is, as I said, um, automatically partitioned across the data nodes that you have, and this is transparently done um, you know, from the point of view of the application developer. Basically, the application developer only needs to create a table uh, within the storage engine and start inserting um, data into that table. And then what MySQL cluster will do is it will take the primary key and hash, uh, create a hash value of that and use that to, um, you know, as even as possible, distribute that row across across the data nodes. And uh, in MySQL cluster, as default, you have uh, two copies of everything. So uh, a row that is inserted in, in MySQL cluster will have a copy also uh, on another data node. Um, and then uh, we have this called SQL nodes, uh, which is the MySQL server, and it provides um, uh, access to the data node for SQL-based applications. And basically, most of the time, uh, the, the MySQL server is used as a proxy uh, to, pr to translate you know, SQL queries to the native uh, API, the native C++ API. And also, the SQL nodes is being used to uh, do cluster-to-cluster uh, -cluster application uh, using the MySQL uh, uh, asynchronous application uh, method. And then uh, we also have uh, what's called management nodes. And the management nodes uh, provides the cluster configuration file, which is basically a text file which describes, you know, what your cluster looks like and, you know, how much memory each data node needs to allocate and, and so on. And the management, management node is very important because uh, when you start up a node in the cluster, what it will do the first time is to connect with the management node to get the cluster configuration file. So it's, it's, it's very important, uh, at least in production, to have a redundancy uh, for the management node. So if one management node goes down, then you have another one that can um, uh, assist with, with uh, you know, node restarts and, and things like that. Because if you have no match known available, then if you have a node that crashes and then try to restart it, then it won't go up because there's no uh, match known available. And also, um, if you have network splits uh, problems, brain split brain problems, then the management known also helps out as the as the arbitrator and will, will tell which node should should live or, or die. Uh, but you can also use the the SQL nodes to act as an arbitrator as well, actually. Um, Let's in next slide. So uh, I'm going to look a little bit more about you know how how master cluster is actually sharding um, uh, the data. So in this example, we have uh, a single table with eight rows. Um, we have uh, four data nodes and and two node groups. So the node groups is a, is a logical uh, construct, and uh, basically master cluster will create uh, extra number of, of node groups depending on how many data nodes that you have in the cluster and how many replicas that you have configured. So in this case, we have four, four uh, data nodes and two node groups. Uh, 
And here we start by inserting the first uh, uh, row into, into a mass cluster. And this row will be inserted into data node one. And then uh, the second one, uh, sorry, not the second one, but then a copy of that row will be inserted into data node two. And the hashing, as I mentioned, is done uh, using the primary key. So it's very important that, uh, that you define a primary key on the table. Otherwise, uh, mass cluster will create a hidden primary key for you. And that will have some, some impact on performance later on when you start you know, trying to query that, that data. But you can also use a user-defined key to, to decide you know, how you would like to partition your data, uh, to customize uh, you know, how, how the data or which data belongs to, to each other in order to minimize you know, uh, network calls and things like that. Uh, the next row, uh, the green row, is inserted onto data node 3, and then a copy of that uh, will be inserted into data node 4. Uh, the third row, the yellow one, uh, will be inserted first uh, into data node 2, and then a copy of that will be inserted into data node 1. And the replication here is done as, uh, sorry, synchronously between the data nodes, and uh, they're using a two-phase commit protocol. So you, after that, that commit is, is completed, you're uh, actually very safe that the, the, that the row has been stored on two different locations, on two different uh, data nodes. And then uh, the, the fourth row is stored first on data node four, and then uh, a copy of that is stored on data node three. Uh, and then, you know, if you go over all the rows, the, the distribution will look like this. So my cluster will, um, as, as much as possible, evenly distribute this table across the, the available data nodes that you have. And then, of course, you have redundancy because uh, you have a copy of, of each row uh, on another data node. Um, so looking at this picture, you can see that, um, that half of the table is located within one node group, and the other half is located in, in the other node group. Uh, so this is this is how you know MySQL cluster is is partitioning the data, and um, this allows also you you know applications to to scale uh, because uh, you know when right requests are coming in, the right request will hit the right you know, the correct data uh, nodes for for where that row is. Um, also looking at the, this picture, you can see that um, or we can talk about backup here. Um, so MySQL cluster supports, you know, the, the regular MySQL dump backup, and, and when you run that, you get the, the SQL dump uh, with, the, with the data and uh, the schema definitions. But MySQL cluster also have what's called a native backup, and it's an online backup, and you initiate that from the management console, and what it does is it, it will send out a, a command to the data nodes and tell them to start a backup. So the backup will happen on each data node here, and when the backup is complete, uh, you will have a backup file on each of these data nodes. The important thing to remember here is that when you when you want to do a restore, is that you need each of those uh, backup files that were created uh, on the data. So you need four of the backup uh, files that are created here to be able to restore the full cluster again. Um, so no groups and the distribution mechanism here allows you to uh, do some interesting in terms of, of, of node failure. So here you have one date node that, that failed. And you can see that because we have the redundancy in mass cluster, uh, we still have access to, to the whole table. So your application can still you know, read and write uh, towards the cluster uh, as, 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 as if nothing has happened. And even if you have multiple nodes uh, fail, you still have the full complete table available, and you can you know run your application even with a two node cluster here. Now, uh, one issue here is that uh, the cluster is up as long as you have one node in each node group up and running. Uh, if you lose both nodes uh, in one node group, then you only have half of the database, and in that case, uh, MySQL cluster will uh, gracefully shut down by 